Hey everyone, I'm Forrest and I'm the director of the reality of Hashtag Van Life. And hey guys, I'm Gabe and I'm the cinematographer for the reality of Hashtag Van Life. Today we're doing a commentary track. Uh, we're going to watch the movie and talk about kind of the way that we set scenes and the difficulties we had on this $170 low budget documentary. So this shot took me a long time to do properly because I would eventually flip one of them upside down, so, yeah. Hi, my name is Forrest Stevens. You actually redo it multiple times until they all landed face up, or you just make cuts? Oh, dude, I, yeah, I had to redo it so many times until they all landed face up. I really didn't have an intro for this, so I just kind of had to figure something out. And then I used all this old archive footage that I stole off of my old YouTube channel. Vlogs and stuff. I bought a Chevy 20 van. I included myself in the van life community. And I even tried to capitalize on the What is the van's name? But my pictures didn't get any likes. Bar. I don't know if I named it. <laughs> the van. The van. And that, that was a really funny bit with the... Um, the blurred Cliff Bar and Kettle Brand logos. I thought that was hilarious because they obviously didn't pay to sponsor this either, so I just blurred it as a bit of an inside joke. <laughs> the Instagram pictures of hashtag van life always show beautiful beaches, beautiful people. And then one of these is actually a van that I know of that was in Victoria, BC. <laughs> Funny enough. My hair not being washed for days looked like and mold. <laughs> Got the dog coming in for commentary. Yeah, it's in those footsteps. <laughs> and this is a sweet scene because um, the um, Blue Bridge here isn't in Victoria anymore, so it's a little bit of history there. It's a very hard shot to get. In hindsight, like a lot of the glare may have been removed with a polarizer, but either way, I was sort of behind uh, forests. Uh, right shoulder with the Zhiyun crane and the A6500 on top trying to get this like cool intro bit. It was sick, yeah, but... the idea was good I thought of like introducing everyone through their social because it's kind of uh, a prelude to what I'm going to be talking about in this movie um, and then I shot this myself actually with Tyler he shot it but um, with a different camera so that's why that one looked different and this is a definition that I took parts out of but it's originally from urban dictionary <laughs> my experience in van life is limited and biased i decided that the best way to answer the many questions i have about van life is to have honest that's another thing too it's like when you actually look closely so the continuity is so off with like my One hair and my facial hair like now my hair is shorter <laughs> you can tell it took us a while to film this whole project <laughs> yeah and the color correction on this was uh, something I had a lot of trouble with, um, just because it was overexposed. But like that scene where the lens or the lens flare was happening, that's like my favorite look on cameras. Yeah. So yeah, we were kind of uh, messing around with two different styles. Yes. I guess the throw. Uh, which right. is more, I guess, like you're in the documentary. Yeah, that's right. Um, there, it's obvious, like the the interviewer is part of the subject, and it's kind of supposed to have more of a natural feel. And the cameraman's also there, filming the whole scene. And then we also did, um, we had two things. So we called it the Thoreau because it's after Louis Thoreau, who's a documentary maker. And then we had. Um, uh, we called it Dicks because there was a, a documentary by another YouTuber called Dicks. And the way he set it up was he would actually go and have these kind of interviews, but also include the interviewee, the interviewer in the scene as well sometimes. Just due to the fact that it's a little more rough of a lifestyle. But we kind of switched it up a lot. Like, we really took it a lot, like, super seriously with the first interview, which was that one with Chance. Like, this is our, like, third or fourth interview we did, and we've had it, like, a lot looser. Um, we had problems with the audio here. I either lost the file from the Zoom with the good boom mic on them, or, or it didn't record. I, I can't remember. Yeah, it was a big thing that we learned was just, like, backup audio. In yeah. this case, this is the audio. We had them labbed. The lab didn't work. 
I uh, don't know why, but then yeah. we have the shotgun mic on the Sony, and that's what you're hearing right now, which I think still sounds great. This is actually really great audio. It's yeah. super clear. It's full. It has the bass. It's got the, you know, this is really, like, missing a lot of the lows. Yeah. And it sounds tinny. It could be their van, too. I mean, it's, like, very reflective. I think, actually, what it is, is, it? is I had a setting on my... I had to take the audio off of the camera. Yeah. And it had wind reduction <laughs> on it. Which takes the lows out because yeah. when wind hits your mic, that's goes, all lows. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's super tinny. And then yeah, we had two cameras here. That's another thing that we really needed to do a lot more often to avoid jump cuts. Is really simply you set up two cameras, um, and then one's like maybe a close up or a different angle, and the other one, or or like even a a camera behind the scene to show the whole set. Um, whatever your kind of documentary is. ...with the societal norm of the American dream is comfort. The house in the suburbs can be cushy. And then I tied everything together. Like, I just... I, I had a very loose storyline, and then we filmed those scenes of me talking right there and and punched them in into four different places within the movie to tie in the questions to make it a story. And that was, like, a, a while after. Because oh, you had yeah. edited, like, most of the project, and then you're like, yeah. we got to do this, <laughs> this yeah. bit to tie everything together. Yeah, the movie was about 80% finished, and then I wrote a script of how to tie it all together, and then we filmed it. Yeah. I feel like it's worth it. So this is the second interview we shot, and this is in the Dick's format of where the camera's there. I'm also in it, but Gabe isn't there. Like, you don't know somebody's behind a camera. Um, yeah, you very much could have filmed this, too, like, vlog style, I guess. Yeah, yeah, more vlog style. Um, more I mean, classical interview style, almost, too. Yeah. But this is, like, the audio's perfect because we got the boom mic. Uh, it's just out of scene on the left. Right, it's on both of us. But the audio is just as good, almost. Yeah, I mean, we had there's you see a lot of boats in the background, and there was one guy with a little RC boat, and he was ripping it around, and it was the most annoying sound. But this part is very clean. I had to cut out all of that. Yeah, there was people like yelling on their boats. Everyone's partying on their boats, like not the ones right behind, but the ones to the left. Yeah, here like a cutaway, a B cam would have been great because you can yes. see the boats moving slightly. Like I think there's a part where kayakers go by, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean there's a time to use jump cuts, and it's really like on a monologue YouTube video. In documentaries, it doesn't look good. It looks different. Like it's completely different, and it doesn't look good. So this was like I think our favorite interview. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just lighting wise, like we actually lit him. There is a small like it's a dish light from Home Depot. We had it plugged into a Goal Zero, um, and then we boomed him as well. Yeah, yeah. really portable setup. Um, yeah, the light coming in and being able to see the things on either side of the windows, it's super nice. Um, there is a bit of a flicker from our light because it's AC, 60 watt inverter that didn't have it wasn't perfect ac yeah um so that's something to think about with portable lights is wondering where your your power source is coming from and then these are clips that i actually took actually all the interviews with this couple is something i did myself just on top of shooting a youtube video with them yeah like when we had all the gear at the start it's like that fine line between having it look good but then gear getting in the way the setup mm. times, like the amount of time we had to spend with the subject mm -hmm. was a lot longer. And then it's like, you know, we're here to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, maybe we got lazy or, yeah. but it's just like the amount of, sometimes people had, you know, everyone's on tight schedules. They don't have a lot of time. So like setting up all this equipment or booms or whatever. Yeah. It's like that fine balance, I guess. Well, I think it also <clears throat> show, goes to show like what effort can do to a film. Um, if, if I was to just shoot this video all myself because it was easier than meeting up and coordinating with Gabe, it would be a completely different movie and it wouldn't be as high quality because of what both of our effort combined produced um, interviews like we did with Dylan and with Chance. Um, and so that's like really uh, underrated is just applying as much effort as you can. But I think you're right about kind of the mobility and the and the ability to like lock down somebody for a certain amount of time those are all challenges that you have to overcome yeah and then i think it's just too like talking about 
the scope of the project and like getting really excited and and making it really big but then you're yeah. never actually able to accomplish it like yeah. you yeah. know it's like making a movie like that's a huge accomplishment and it's cool to, to be able to do it and not let like don't get stressed out about how big it's getting yeah. and then just not do anything at all it's like, a huge problem for filmmakers and creatives in general is that they have an idea a, such a concrete idea and when they can't accomplish it they no, never put anything out so like just working with what you have like I'm a huge believer of working with what you have and what you can what's within reach and that's why we created this film and it could have been much better but it it became something at least and the budget we were working on too 170 bucks <laughs> and that's like that's like a very liberal budget I think it probably cost less than that in reality but I mean it makes me appreciate some more like geared that's geared towards documentary filmmaking like now i have a different camera it's got mm-hmm. xlr like audio preamps like that means yeah. you don't have to bring as many things along and rig your camera out totally um, it sort of simplifies the workflow absolutely yeah when you're working when you're working with cheap gear there's there's gonna be so much more problems yeah you can get like a similar ish result yeah it's just gonna take a lot more time and maybe like more of a headache as well mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, I gotta make a marker of that. The color grid shift, yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that a cultural shift is happening because of economic uh, pressures on people, and I think this is just a way for people to survive and to get ahead and to live a more comfortable, financially comfortable life. And when I did my public screening, I had somebody say, like, you know, that they they thought it should be re-edited and everything and really it's not about re-editing this movie it's it's about reshooting it (laughs) in so many ways like i'm working with such a limited amount of footage here i made a 40 minute long movie out of like six hours of footage yeah um and i was trying to make it longer and it's just when you don't have as much footage you're including things and you're not using b-roll you don't have b-roll when you only have six hours of documentary footage um it's like so yeah yeah just, just working with editing like, yeah. long form is so much different than like short youtube videos like the first long form piece i edited i was like scraping by with b-roll oh yeah. it was like kind of i had to go out and shoot some stuff on my phone like it was just it wasn't, it wasn't good i got hobbled all together totally And I purposely like combined these stories, kind of contradicting each other, and kind of having opposing values. And but then it all comes in, kind of where everybody talks about the freedom it gives and the ability to feel like it's home and financial freedom or freedom to pursue different occupations. So it's like that's the only kind of way that I've tailored this movie to maybe give people certain feelings, but otherwise I've allowed people to think whatever they want from it so obviously you're going to connect to certain people more than you will with other people in this movie um whatever i want to read uh spend time with my friends on the beach and even go travel to places where i might have stayed cozy at home otherwise i thought it was funny because he says that he he might stay home and watch netflix and it's kind of a jab at Netflix, uh, which is funny because I tried to get this movie on Netflix. <laughs> so I don't know if they would have even been keen on that. <laughs> Stay home, watch Please. Netflix, yeah, never buy leave, the movie. Yeah. never do anything. Yeah. Buy my movie. <laughs> Yeah, and so much of this, like, the movie idea was to make it about van life, but make it about the social media aspects of van life, because I can't tell the story of van life, it's so big, but I can tell the story of social media of van life, because that's a, such a niche thing, it's two things combined, it's much smaller, um, and it has both sides of that, so that's why I included this part of the interview, is she's talking about social media, it could be, she's not even talking about van life. 
social media. It's just about social media. And that's just not reality. Um, but There's those so the two things combine and, really and become kind of an interesting subject. And that's where I went with this. People on Instagram are feeling like they need to post these images that match this idea of what beauty is that isn't actually true. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's a larger societal problem that we we think of beauty in one way. Um, instead of seeing it in a broader way, and it's it's harder to share that on on social media. I think Instagram. On social media, when people go up and then you have to cut because <laughs> <know, 'cause> they're <laughs> they're continuing yeah. their sentence, but you don't want to use what's after. Yeah. To talk to somebody on social media, and family. then you know, like blah blah, and, and it's like, oh shit, Burrell. gotta cut that out. <laughs> End on a question. <laughs> for their over glamorization of living in a van. I had I tried getting a couple other. Um, Instagram van lifers. I was emailing back and forth where, where's my office now? And I was going to include this part about how they were featured in the New Yorker. Um, but then they just dropped off email. I don't know if they like off the grid for a bit. I don't know what happened there. I, like seriously, I had probably a dozen emails with them. And I don't know what happened, but either way, got Sabrina and Jimmy Harrell. That's cool. Of the they were bus. They were willing to do this. Super. I think they're down. They have a good you know. following on Instagram. What? They have a good following on Instagram. So yeah. It's like good to see that perspective. Of, yeah. No, definitely. Um, and I think they were interested in being in my documentary because I told them up front this is about over romanticizing it on social media. Right. So I think they were like really interested in kind of defending themselves. Right. Which I cut a ton of that out because obviously you can tell I don't have a lot of like attractive like, footage here baby, and the audio is not fantastic so either so like you know I can't include something in my movie so much I can't like all this all took up so much time so in my movie which is fine because it's good interview all that but um, it's nothing really appealing to look at or anything on a self dream can inspire people that's why we focus on this positive aspect of but i think having controversy like in a in a video is actually really important like know, these people are defending it they're saying like you know we're trying to sell I a dream trying we're trying to be entertaining people. Uh, um, I think that people and people will disagree with that and, and agree say, with it so, so here what i did actually was my camera and stopped and recording for me, I'm so i took old footage of me when i first started talking to them and then overlaid pretty much like hate comments from their channel over top to hide the fact that I was talking and it was a completely different scene than what it was actually being said in the audio. It's <laughs> pretty clever. <laughs> I had to do something and you got to get creative when you don't have the footage, right? It's not ideal. I, d I actually don't like that scene a lot, but um, yeah. And then this is in Vancouver by beside Home Depot. Um, there's ton, just tons of people living under the bridges in their motorhomes and RVs. Like that's a tent trailer with no car or truck. Yeah, it's just parked. That's, that's going to be there for a while. It's going to be there. Yeah. And there was in the other scene, there was like a station wagon with all their possessions on top, just tarped. Like it's wow. it's quite a situation they have there. And it's not unique either. It's all cities have something like that. I actually met up with a man who lived out of his motorhome out of necessity. He definitely had some issues with this lifestyle, and one of them was even finding a place to park. I was parked on a... So, yeah, if, you're, if you're listening right now, um, or at this part of the movie, your left ear is getting a lot of attention, and your right ear is getting nothing, uh, because my mic was only half plugged into my Zoom recorder. <laughs> um, so it was only getting the left feed from the microphone. And then partway through, I realized that and plugged it in. <laughs> so it, it's kind of weird. It's really horrible, actually. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but I couldn't talk about a story without the part where it's in the left only. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, geez. And you can hear like, cook, cook, and then yeah. shunk. <laughs> Dude, you learn so much from doing a project this big. Definitely. Like, this movie would be so different if we started filming this year yeah. instead of last. And that's the thing. It's like, should I wait until I have all the gear and, like, all this stuff? And it's like, no, no. just go out and do it. And then <laughs> yeah. you'll learn. And then if you want to do it again, like, go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah. 
Oh, well, exactly. Like, I shot 130 vlogs. I shot, you know, 50 alternative dwelling documentaries. And that got me only to the state where I could make this. Right. If I hadn't shot any of that, I, it would be nothing. Yeah. So it's... Um, Definitely. Yeah, just start with what you have and build. Yeah. Just and I think that's how, like, yeah, just producing, like, a large body of work. Yeah. That's how you're going to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't show it to anybody, like showing it is also valuable because you get feedback yeah. and you see what works and what doesn't. But just producing, just being having practice is super important. And so I need some help. Christina Adams from Adventure Dorks from And I had to cut this down a lot because she had really great tips, but I realized that they're not really interesting to people that are watching this for van life and they're they're not really interesting uh, really for anybody quickly. else besides people that are interested like specifically in social media. Um, and so I just really put in like funny parts that I thought, like, I thought it was funny how I asked that, that such a big question. With, well, actually, and then she's like, well, actually, it's like a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> and then just, and then it's like, boom, 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 like, like 20 different things. And I, I kind of look like I'm like, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> You're getting overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Right and then now, I cut this in to include Quentin, Quentin and I hope to do some photo collabs to make my Instagram pop and kind of show and like that I was actually trying shoot it up I had to crop those photos really strangely to include them into a 16 by 9 because they were all at one by one oh jeez <laughs> and it says you know we'll give you a thousand followers those are all going to be probably bots or, or people like farms out there and it's just not actual people who are engaging yeah, so, in what you have to say. I you mean, if you've watched the movie, you, you know that it's not a good strategy what I did. I, I actually spent more money than I probably should. Super, super I should have created some content and then actually advertised properly. It's a fake, right? But, um... Thanks. Buying followers is, is just going to blacklist your account. So, don't do that. <laughs> I bought 2,500 followers. I mean, it works. It's funny, but it's... 300 of them eh. fell off the next day. None of these people engaged in my people? posts. So to make up for that, I spent 40 bucks a month to automatically gain 500 likes per post. I also gave my password and 50 I thought that was so funny because I think I messaged you or whatever and you were like, Instagram dude, your photos are popping. Yeah, I, I was saw like, your dude. Instagram. I'm like, wow, you're blowing up. Holy <laughs> smokes. <laughs> yeah, dude, 500 likes But then it was weird because I looked at all of the pictures and was like 567 likes, 544 likes, yeah, yeah. 500. And I was like, oh, weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was like 44 of those likes for real. Yeah. <laughs> If it was a good photo, it'd get into the 600 likes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. If I'm to become van life famous, I need to look the part. So I enlisted my friend Greg to help me with the most important part of the look. The man bun. So I think it just clips in. Yeah, we actually good. legitimately had so many problems figuring out that this is like a barrette. Like it yeah. snaps open side to side. And that's how you clip yeah, it in. It we thought it like slides in or... <laughs> We ended up like putting hair ties in and like hair clips to hold it. It took quite a while. It was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Quite the Such a funny bit yeah. though. This is Emily's idea as a bit. I told her that I needed more bits. This is a bit of an inside joke. Um, that's Gabe. Those are pictures. <laughs> me. It's off my Instagram. I didn't know he did this. I just went. I think I was like, "Hey, can I use your washroom?" Yeah. And I go in there and it's pictures of me on the mirror. <laughs> How long have these been up for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, inspiration for the man bun. Yeah. <laughs> and some upbeat swaying. All the music is from uh, Artlist, which is commonly used by YouTubers. But it's like being able to get just like such a wide library of music to use on any project for 200 bucks a year is like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, that never would have happened in the past. And, like, good music. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. It's not, like, tailor-made or anything, but No. It's... My one thing with, like, I love our list. I use it on pretty much all my projects. But it's, like, some of the songs, like, they always feel like they're trying to be the yeah. main focus of the video. Like, if you want something to put in the background, in the background. of interviews and stuff like that. Yeah. But the That's ambient section... 
It's yeah. great for that. It is <laughs> you just got to do some digging. And you got to do some cutting in your project too. Yeah. Man, that it looked better before. Our ending so man bun was like the worst man. one I thought actually. So I did what I could. This is hilarious. Came up with this idea a long, long time ago <laughs> to do a parody van tour. Extra small, extra stealth. Got the feather in the. Oh my god, that's such a funny touch to me. And I was cutting together two audios because there's so much wind noise that the wind noise actually caused problems with the good mic. And then the bad mic caught some drilling noise. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like construction going on. construction. So this is the good mic. Yeah, anyway. If you hear drilling, it's because I've switched mics. <laughs> And the music like behind here. it. Even though it's Canada, the music you know, is it great. Still. It's so inspiring. Like to call the garage. Um, it's got my this is actually like you for know, anyone out there. This is a great setup. Um, <laughs> I actually use this in my <laughs> Civic. <laughs> I have the van, but it's broken down all the time. So like, this is the go-to. Made it up to yeah. here on Vancouver Island, Cape Scott, and this uh, exact big here. Except it's the coupe, not the hatchback Civic. Yeah. Which is a little tighter. You go put your feet right in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. I know when I saw those Instagram stories of your Honda, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I got, I got this, you know, I had this idea a long time ago, but I was like, Gabe, like, yeah, I need some tips, man. Like, and you're like, oh dude, the table folds out, it goes right on the trunk. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, kitchen soda. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a van to live the van life. Just no. a space you can go home. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't take much to be homeless. <laughs> this is jokes, everyone. Oh, you were trying to get your shadow out of frame. Yeah, I don't think it, this I was like know. high noon. It's probably the worst time to Yeah, uh, as you can see in the first shot, it's totally overexposed. No ND filter. Yeah, I mean, this was like. I don't think this is broadcast safe. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Ah, uh, gear doesn't matter, right? It's all about the story, so. It's all about the story. <laughs> Rocking the Teddy Fresh. Hopefully, uh... Slow motion laugh at the end. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's the best. Right? So cheesy. Well, I love it. I mean, not technically, but, uh... You think, of, you think about it, it's kind of like... It's like a mini, mini... I love that. Mini, mini van. I still <laughs> yeah, call it that all the time. Because it's like, mini vans look like this, it, it, but yeah, taller. It does have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like a hatchback. Put a sliding door on it. Yeah, put a slide. Oh my god, put a sliding door on it. All of Greg's bits are like, Yo, Greg, help me. <laughs> he <laughs> he just comes in. Greg. <laughs> and then we're all like laughing a little bit. <laughs> you hear you laugh a little bit. I'm laughing. It's like, this is just hilarious. Four hair ties in here, too. It's a really All right. well, a mess. And I had to cut it oh, out. You... Yeah, you're sitting in the pat. Oh, no, you can't I'm see not. it. Oh, okay. He's, <laughs> he's like about to drive away, and then he got into the passenger side. Well, it was open, and I am not a good actor. Actually, has the perfect van. I just had to convince him to let me borrow it. Man, you can tell it's winter. You can see our breath. There. Yeah. This yeah, bit, man. Oh my god. People like it? I think it's hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, well, when I publicly screened it, people thought it was really funny. Oh, okay, cool. Um, just when I, like, even right here, people just thought, like, they already knew what was happening, right? Yeah. But then when they see this, and it's, like, such a mess, and it folds <laughs> it's out. <in> half. <laughs> it's like, so much better than it's a folding bike. <laughs> it's an awesome bike, by the way. <laughs> And I just, the only thing here that I had envisioned was you driving away on the bike. Like the whole bit, I thought the yeah. best part is right here. Yeah. Because you did it. And it's where it's like uneven and you're trying to get up this hill. And it's like so sketch. Using Gabriel's van so and switching up social media platforms to cross promote onto my Instagram, I made the ultimate romantic cinematic van life experience video. Cine bars come down. 
Yeah, do you know it's cinematic, yeah, man? Yeah. I get that yeah. 235 aspect ratio. <laughs> I don't even know I actually know if it's really like these gas station shots. Oh, me too. Like, something about it. Well, how everything's dark and it's like nice and contrasty. Yeah. But the faded look is still there. Yeah. S log 2. S log 2, yeah. Did you grade it at all? Or you I graded it? it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I graded it. Yeah, this is out of China Beach. I love this song too. When I, yeah, I was scrolling through Artlist and I found this. I was like, All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is dope. <laughs> Cooking up some rice. Yeah. That was some good meals actually. Had some like stir fry. Dude, yeah, it was legit. I thought this was a funny bit to include because it's like humanizes the cinematicness of it and yeah. makes it feel more of an adventure. I think like purely cinematic is actually like really whack. Even if you yeah. forgot who you want to be. Cinematic for the sake of being like, I can do this. It's like it's okay for real, but joy and pleasure for watching some, it. Yeah. The main some story in there. Need some story. Of the moment. Need some emotion, some story. And the Unless cheesiness, man. Like I wrote it as cheesy as possible. Yes. It's so good. What did it say? Happiness and joy oh, being the main emotions, emotions of the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, oh it's got like alliteration, God. but you're like doing like a slam poem. Yeah, <laughs> Professions only holding a place in the past. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. I love these shots in the trees because you look like you're just being dwarfed by them, you know? Like, oh, you yeah. can see the scale of that. The uh, scale of it. Yeah, that one scene, that first one. Where it's like all the trees and you're and, and I'm you in the bottom the left. And the, yeah. Yeah, where I'm walking down the thing. It's so good. So this we were planning on filming some like awesome surfing <laughs> bits and this is probably the smallest day of surf we've ever had. Like oh, come look on, at look at that. It's like maybe not even a foot. <laughs> it's so small. Like there's one shot where but I think we made it look actually kind of I just got really low in the water. Yeah. It looks um, terrible here, but Yeah. There's a couple shots that look okay. And I couldn't catch anything, man. I'm not used to that beach, <laughs> oh, yeah. those waves. My, my board is like waterlogged. <laughs> Super waterlogged board. Like this that shot, one looks this like looks decent. Okay. It's still small though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, small wave. it's, still it's like a waist high wave. Which is okay, but that's Gabe actually. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Just to let you guys up. know, like behind the scenes, <laughs> I literally scene. couldn't catch any waves. <laughs> if this was Tofino, it would be a different story, but... yeah. Um, yeah, this this beach isn't good. The waves pitch like way too fast. That's I mean. dope. That's I Boom. love that. That's cool. Yeah, they pitch really fast, and then they're super shallow, and it kind of sketched me out a little bit. Like I said, I wasn't used to it. That's so funny, dude. So many people are like, 8K? 8K yeah, like, views? Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. And like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, my sister, she was like, because I, when I viewed it, I had a public thing, she's like, I think most people think like 8,000 is a lot of views. Again. Yeah. And I was like, but it's like That's some of your videos have like half a mil. Oh yeah. Like, so, what do you think is viral? Like a million? No, I think viral is actually defined by where it comes from. If it's like a Jimmy Fallon skit right. and it's on trending and it has yeah. six million views, it's, it's, not, viral. it's not viral. Yeah. I think viral is like a, a video that's posted to Reddit that goes from like having a thousand views to like 500,000 overnight yeah. that's viral that's what viral is defined as for me now yeah because viral that's what you, it used to be like for viral videos um it's just super uncommon now i don't think like anything from buzzfeed or i mean obviously those aren't viral videos even though they have tons of views yeah unless it's gone from nothing to something because they have so much infrastructure behind their their videos yeah um they guarantee it's gonna get a million plus. Yeah, it's like the unknown creator that pops out of nowhere. And... Did you see that video of that guy in, in Idaho? That's like, I'm here in Idaho. This is the fields. This is the corn behind me. And it like went, it was like number two on trending. What? And it got like a million views. It was so funny. That's awesome. It got featured in like Philip DeFranco. That's a viral video. Yeah. You know? yeah. Actually, I like the second half is like, it's really great. Yeah, well, my whole plan was to make like the first half as cheesy as possible. The second half is actually what I learned by yeah. doing these interviews. Like, and it comes to my conclusion that van life is whatever you make it is. And that's yeah. this whole silly poetry thing that I did. But 
you know, it's a reality, it's an escape, it's yeah. a choice. It's a choice. It's a necessity. Choice. And it's kind of epic way to end it. Yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> end on the beats, man. If you can, this whole thing was edited to music as much as possible. Um, you cut when the beat drops, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like right here, the, the music changes and they, they jump right in. These are cool. Yeah, it's a it's great a picture. It's a too. really good picture, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do they take in Guadalupe? Yeah. Oh. And they, they stayed in that little house, like oh, house thing sweet. in the trees. Looks like a beehive. Chrome and Disco. <laughs> this guy's killing it on YouTube right now. He's got such a cute dog. I think, yeah, that's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> Jax is killing it. Um, bus is gone. Yeah, bus is gone, but he's moving on. Such a lot of guy. these people actually in the end, like everyone's kind of like, yeah, sailboat or other van or whatever it is. Yeah, and that's, it's yeah, cool. it's definitely something like van life I feel like is a transitional period for a ton of people. Yeah. More as, as opposed to like a way of life. Save money. Like, yeah. yeah. Reach towards goals through it. Like, yeah. I want to get back into van life, but I want to do it so that I can go buy land and yeah. have something to live in while I could, like build something else. Yeah. Like it's a, tra it's, for me, it's also transitional. a transitional thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, in my case, starting out in videography, having the van, like, could do so many more, like, travel yeah. films or whatever. Didn't have to pay for hotels, like. Exactly. Yeah. A brief hiatus. Hiatus. I got a lot of compliments about this little clip at the end. People oh, are yeah? like, wow, it's so professional. <laughs> and it's just Gabe walking around in the circle. Yeah, doing an orbit bit. And then these are, yeah, these are clips I just snagged from Dylan with his permission. Um, but he's killing it. He's over in Europe right now on a sailboat. Yeah, it looks like he's having a lot of things like Al in Albania today or something. Yeah, watching the story. That's he's killing cool. it. I got Quentin's, Quentin's is, some... He's working on like, uh, yeah. like van repairs. Hey, he's he started his own little van? thing. Like yeah. his, his Westphalia repairs. Super cool. With another homie, I think. But he's like converting them out, putting solar on them and everything. Yeah. Chance just broke both of his feet. <laughs> Yeah, falling no off good. a roof dude he fractured wow. both his feet but he's like bedridden in the van with his girlfriend now Jeez. um tyler's killing it I, i'm just so stoked to like see where you know i've known these people for like a year or two at this point yeah and like seeing where they're at and what they're doing now is so cool i added this one in <laughs> <laughs> Greg is not is not furthering his education on her extensions. I had Emily and Ronnie too. <laughs> That's awesome. And there's Gabe. Unfortunately, I only had a short thing for you, but yeah, no there's the engine. Yeah. The engine. The car's still uh, broken down. <laughs> I changed my my write up a little bit from this. Right. Um, Dude, and now you're leaving for hitchhiking and like, yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow. Uh, by the time this is up, it'll be like, it'll be I'll, I'll be already back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Sweet. The next start, like, I never stop, dude. Why Keep stop? Going, man. Why stop? Yeah. And then Super when I had fun. public viewing, it was a problem here where everybody started clapping. Right. And I, I tried to intentionally make the oh, credits as fair. short as possible because yeah. I hate long credits. Yeah. Uh, are we doing that right now? And bloopers. Oh, boom. <laughs> That's the boom. That's the boom. <laughs> oh, this is real van life right here. My clutch, this is my, my favorite part of the movie. 100%. My clutch just gave out. Just the so fact that, like, when we went out to film, film the cinematic really? thing, I was like, dude, I hope something happens. <laughs> yeah, and we or broke we down. have some good bloopers. <laughs> yeah. And, like, 90% of the bloopers. Dude, this got <laughs> such a laugh, dude. <laughs> People like it. Yeah, my friend gave these to me and helped me work in my van, but they're way too big. It's like an XL. I'm like the tiniest guy ever. <laughs> you got to cross them over. It's kind of a bit of a goof and a gag and a laugh and a gap. I love that. Goof and a gag and a laugh and a gap. Goof and a gag and a laugh and a gap. Now, uh, yeah. I can say that because I don't have to put on some overalls to get underneath. Because Gabriel's the Volkswagen man. I'm just the man with the camera today. Volkswagen with I guess if you had a bigger black screen. 
I mean, it w it's not going to be a problem, screen. like, after the credits, like, black screen, let people, oh, yeah. like, applaud, and then it goes into bloopers, but then people might leave. Yeah, I yeah. think it's over, so. And, and this going on YouTube, people will probably leave, but yeah. I'm also uploading the bloopers separate, and yeah. there's, like, people will look at the time and realize, oh, there's three minutes left. What's going on? Yeah. I don't care. I, mean, I, I think it's worth putting... Yeah. This is the best bit ever. You're like, yeah, let's get some vice grips. And I just said, you got some, <laughs> you got zap some straps. zap straps. <laughs> it's really all you need. Yeah. Did you actually post this? Yeah. On YouTube? Yeah, I got this on the channel. Okay. Yeah. Gabriel Swift on YouTube. Nice. Dude, this is going to be such a sick cover. <laughs> And that was the only <laughs> f bomb. You said the f bomb there, and I cut it out because I I didn't want it to get yeah, rated right. like yeah, like R or something. Because there's like R. Well, oh, yeah, it's yeah. totally clean. Yeah. It, there, well, people Even, say shit twice, but that's right. it. Yeah, I think you have a couple. Like you can say it a couple times, and then it's PG or like PG thirteen. Yeah. yeah, I know you have some stupid. I don't know. No, I, I was stoked about those bullshit. birds. I know this. Yeah, <laughs> those birds so are cool. dope. <laughs> Birdman. Hopefully that doesn't get like. Birdman, yeah, by Little Wayne and Birdman. With, with all these challenges, um, that bit, man, where you, we couldn't get the bike out. That's so funny. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I love these dancing bits. You were just testing gear. Yeah. You were like, yo, can you just do something? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just started dancing. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> and that's it. Oh yeah, and so I put that at the end. That's too. sweet. <laughs> that's great. Just because it's going on YouTube. Like, yeah. Man. Super cool. Here. That's it. There it you go. It feels so short, man. That was 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, like, so, can I say what yeah, yeah, happened? So, uh, <laughs> we actually, this is the second time recording this commentary. We did it once before, and then about 20 minutes into the movie, Forrest realized it was the wrong cut. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you actually, like, shave four minutes off the movie, and, like, yeah. this is my first time watching this cut of the movie, and I have to say, it's, like, yeah, it's a lot tighter. It's like, it's, like, tight. super watchable. Yeah. It's dope. It's really good. Um, it makes... Yeah, it feels a lot different than the other one. I don't know what, like, if you added, like, I don't know, it just feels totally different than the other cuts. I, I'll tell you what I did. I added B-roll every time that somebody was introduced. Yeah. Um... I would add B-roll, and then it would cut to them, and then I would have their Instagram thing, because that was another thing I did every time they were introduced. So I added B-roll, which kind of cut everything, like, it changed everything up a little bit, and then I cut down the Sabrina, and I cut down the, the um, social media, and I cut down the hair extension bit. Right. Those were the three things that were too long, yeah. in my opinion, and that just tightened everything up, made it really flow without actual pauses in the movie where you're like, I'm bored. Yeah. There's, like, nothing in here... If you're interested in the subject, you shouldn't be, be bored. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually what we were talking about, too, is, like, watching the movie with someone else. Yeah. And then you kind of, like, have that, like, feeling in your gut where you're yeah. like, okay, they're bored. Or, like, I need to explain this part. And yeah. it's like, well, you should probably take it out. <laughs> yeah. If you ever need to explain something, it should be all self-explanatory within the movie. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can do whatever you want. But in certain movies, it's hard to understand what's going on. And that's the point is it's kind of like a deeper you have to pay attention to a movie yeah. other movies you can have them on in the background you know everything that's going on yeah so somewhere in between there but in a sense where if somebody was paying attention it makes sense you don't have to fill people in on context yeah um i really like, like to right like here. just having that um like the cinematic van life experience or all those different mm -hmm. aspects to it because it keeps it dynamic yeah and then it's like you listen to people talk for the main portion of the video but then at the end it's like you kind of you know it's, it's something totally different right and then yeah it keeps the viewer's attention i guess because you don't really know yeah. what to expect <laughs> yeah um you definitely don't know what to expect with this movie and i think you're right i think it becomes more of like um an intense engagement in the front in the beginning of the movie because you have to pay attention to what all these people are saying yeah and more of like a laid back like just watching experience by the end of it yeah and you're you're having fun you know, partway through, you realize that this movie's is supposed to be funny. Yeah. And you're having fun by then, and you're just sitting back, and you're just enjoying it. I mean, that's yeah. the purpose of it. Yeah. I think that's something that's kind of funny. Is like, we're talking about all these things that I was trying to do, but 
and like seeing what works and what doesn't but really once you put something together you just realize that like you know it either works or it doesn't and you can kind of just move it around there if yeah that makes sense yeah well yeah. like with long form like it's just you have an idea going in and then once you have the clips like you see if it works you have or not. to be flexible yeah yeah so you're like oh maybe that actually doesn't look good they're like and then don't try and force it yeah and so yeah i think it was pretty fluid because we even like you came up with ideas after the fact like after you were editing yeah um, and we had to go and shoot those but i don't yeah. think i came up with an idea that i actually cut out of the film no um just because of so, such scarce amount of footage to make a 40 minute long video yeah um i can't think of anything that i actually cut out so like there was a lot of post or pre-production thought put in and then really it was like when we go and actually shoot the production we were like okay what are we doing with this footage you know i brought it back do a rough edit and be like okay this story is actually heading this way instead of that way yeah and then we'll go shoot it again and rewrite it's all about just constant rewrites. I mean, documentaries are not like short films in the way that you have to deal with what you get. Um, short films or movies, there's a improvisation that happens that you deal with, but it do usually doesn't direct the storyline. Like um, the improvisation of asking somebody a question and their answer yeah. dictates what happens next. Which I think makes... I mean, I love watching documentaries, but I didn't know making them would be so challenging. You know, it's like in the editing process. So, Gabe, you just bought a Blackmagic Cinema camera. Ursa Mini it? Pro 4.6K. That's the, the minimum camera that you need for Netflix originals. Dude. Yeah, Forrest and I are going to be shooting some Netflix originals here. Cooking um, on high part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got the, the Ursa Mini and hoping to like really dive into documentary this was like nice. the start and i'm um, just doing a full-on full-on dive so that's kind of the plan over the next um year or so like i've got a couple projects lined up so i'm excited to to keep creating sweet how you, about you man you have one imdb credit <laughs> yeah i'm on imdb now so <laughs> <laughs> so it's legit it's legit it's legit um and you're going to be posting stuff to youtube or doing client work i guess your website yeah. probably i mean right now stuff? i'm doing like 90 percent client work mm -hmm. um which i i like i do enjoy it i post a lot of stuff on vimeo um yeah i've always like i guess i've been contemplating starting up the youtube again but mm -hmm. i think i will mm -hmm. um yeah just got to feed the content beast <laughs> but, yeah I, yeah I, I don't know yeah gotta give you gotta just give somebody something right yeah i mean with vimeo it's hard because the audience just isn't there like no you watch like super professional stuff and it's got a thousand views yeah and like youtube you upload anything and you'll get a thousand views yeah well not really but um but yeah I'm okay. excited to see what, what you do, man. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and uh, I'm heading out tomorrow. Bags are packed. Um, I bought the camera that we filmed, the camera that Gabe filmed his bits in this documentary with, the uh, A6500 Sony. Um, so I'll be making a documentary about hitchhiking. I've already started filming for it. Producing a documentary, producing... Um, a really interesting travel series that I've never seen the likes of before on YouTube. So, because uh, I'm, I'm kind of sick and tired of everyone who looks like me making a, a trendy <laughs> Sam Colder type travel vlog. So I'm going to flip that whole concept on its head with what I'm doing. What's um, your timeline? Uh, for projects being completed? Yeah, like you're coming back from the hitchhiking trip yeah. September? Yeah, I'll come back in September. Um, and then I'm going to start uploading really soon afterwards. Yeah. I'm going to start uploading probably, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost September by the time this is up. Um, but I'm probably going to start uploading either a schedule five days a week or every second day. Um, and I'm going to be filming multiple projects a day while I'm gone. Are you still going to be continuing the van life tours? Yes. on the channel or okay yeah yeah, that's yeah so that'll be an, that'll be another thing because van life tours get views they get subscribers they get an audience um and they're collaborative so like i don't know if that's a word but 
Um, <laughs> it is now. It's a yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a collaboration. So like, you get people from the other channel, and you also like I also get to meet people that I continue to work with. Um, Chris, I did a video with. He's like a good friend of mine now. We go slacklining all the time. I met Gabe from it. Um, yeah. We hang out. We make movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just like, why not? If it works and it's fun, um, I definitely don't enjoy it as much as I used to. Right. Um, and that's why I'm doing something different. But I also think it's important to include them currently. And we'll see. Yeah. Um, but on my trip, if I meet up with anybody that's got an alternative dwelling, like I'm staying at this dude's cabin in Pemberton that's all off grid. Um, and he's like a, he's in like uh, Chicago right now filming a bunch of stuff. He's a filmmaker. And uh, I'm staying with this guy named, his name is Fly. And he lives, okay, this, <laughs> this is crazy. He lives on his off grid, off grid boat yeah. in uh, the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. And then he works, like, hauling stuff in a truck that he's converted. Like, the the back part, the sleeper or whatever, he's made all, like, super hippie and shit. Yeah. So he sleeps in that. And then he Airbnbs his place out and in the Sunshine Coast, like, his boat. Yeah. And he sleeps in his van in the alleys of Vancouver. <laughs> and he's probably, like, in his, like, 70s or something. What? This guy's hilarious. That's amazing. Um, so I hope to meet up with him on the Sunshine Coast and stay on his boat <laughs> and do videos sweet. of him yeah lots of yeah lots of alternative stuff is going to be happening that's separate from the travel series that i'm also going to create that's super cool i'm actually i'm really interested in the boat thing i thought yeah like this summer is going to move into the boat but i mean that could that's a cool do you, you know, don't project. even have a boat yet I don't though. even have a boat yeah yeah right <laughs> yeah so it's not gonna it's not gonna work <laughs> but like yeah like boat life as van life i think they're kind of it's an easy well not an easy mm -hmm. transition it's quite different on the boat but um same sort of like concept i guess in terms of freedom yeah and definitely. why you're doing it like saving money etc i think boat life i think less people are interested in it as a trendy thing because the barrier to entry is so much Big. bigger yeah it's it's i don't know i think it's probably more expensive but yeah. it's also a lot harder to learn how to like even if it's a motorboat learn how to repair your engine or learn yeah. how to how to like go around certain obstacles and read charts and if it's a sailboat, then you have to deal with the wind and learning how to sail. Um, but I, I think it's fucking sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like getting your driver's license and then yeah. there's your ticket to van life and yeah. buying a van. Um, yeah, you have to, like, understand the ocean yeah. and tides and exactly. buoys and all that stuff. So, yeah. Have but you... uh, I don't know. It's super cool, like, just being able to, like, pick up a mooring buoy and then yeah. like, driving wherever you want and that's your new home yeah and just anchoring yeah in ports and or stuff anchoring. yeah um what is it oh have you seen the portlandia skit where there's this like cyclist carrier who has to like his boss wants him to get a car so he eventually like buys a car like the perfect car for his hipster lifestyle and then yeah. he gets the keys and he's and the, how the skit ends is he says sweet i'm a homeowner <laughs> <laughs> um one other thing I wanted to just quickly say is I think it's really interesting that like I think documentaries are such a cool thing because you can literally think of one subject and make a documentary about it. Like we made a documentary about van life. I'm going to go make a, a documentary called Hitchhiking about hitchhiking. It'll be the documentary about hitchhiking. Like Levi, Levi Allen made a documentary about slacklining. Yeah. You can literally like you can take a subject, either a person or something that people do and make the documentary about it right like you're like one of the few people that has touched that subject yeah in terms of yeah you could be the only person yeah. you could be the first yeah or you could be um have some unique spin on it yeah or something yeah you know like you could you could like there's other documentaries about homelessness but you could actually find like three different homeless people and follow them around and see what their life is yeah like and call your documentary like tent city or homelessness yeah something, you know like yeah you it's can, cool all the different angles you can take like you want to choose a specific story or look at it from a different angle yeah and, um, and anyone can do that documentaries are the easiest thing to make as yeah far as film and i think goes. if you can if you can film a documentary if your equipment 
can mm -hmm. like if it'll work in a documentary setting it'll work in any other setting because it's like the right. least controlled least contrived like yeah. very much like run and gun yeah and if you have those skills i think like shooting in a studio or shooting a narrative project will be easier besides i yeah. guess working with act i mean i don't know maybe there's more complications with scripts and yeah and that kind of stuff but i mean the other part of that is like when you're working with people there's a huge barrier to entry um you got to pay people you got to have lighting all that documentaries all the other thing about it is that it's so cheap yeah. the, and really the only thing that you need to learn and all these documentary people people that are interested in it need to learn is storytelling yeah um and the best way to do that is to actually pick a subject that's a person like if you're going to make a rock climbing documentary pick a really good rock climber and follow them around for a couple months and piece together a story and yeah. always be thinking about okay if this happens this will be my story if it doesn't happen and this happens we're going to go here with the story and it's it's a really intense thing to be diligent about um but you can do it anybody can do it and it's like super natural too because yeah. it's, what are you interested in or what do you do like exactly. you had a van so you exactly. lived the van life yeah and then like i have a van i've lived the van life um yeah. And so it was like a really natural fit. And then being able to also like relate to your subjects and have yeah. genuine interest in like what they're talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, if you're not curious about your it's subject. It's going to fall flat. Then yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. It's going to be, you're going to be reading questions off a script and then your answers are going to be boring. Um, I also really like the format in documentaries about like doing, I think, I don't know if they start, I don't know if he started it, but like the, um, uh, supersize me you know right. how he tried something for 30 days yeah and then it's like the before and the after yeah and they you know the guy from the sugar film did that yeah i kind of did that with this with doing like trying to make myself instagram famous well i think it's what you're doing with hitchhiking too Definitely. like you're not just following someone hitchhiking like you're hitchhiking <laughs> yes um putting yourself yeah. as the subject when you don't yeah. have like i don't have a subject for hitchhiking i don't have anybody that i can follow around yeah. i've interviewed people on cortez that hitchhike but it's not i i couldn't follow them around and make a movie about them yeah because it's just they just do that every day and it's their mode of transportation and that's a unique story mm -hmm. but it's not worth a documentary right so what i'm doing is i'm placing myself into that documentary seriously ripping off supersize me and all the other <laughs> movies that have done it yeah and and using that as a tool to tell a story and see where it goes. Yeah. The documentary is going to be interesting. I've got such a solid plan for my YouTube show, mm -hmm. but the documentary is, is a little bit open. Right. I mean, the the subtext of it is um, travel or the rise and fall, the rise and fall of the cheapest way to travel. Yeah. So it's talking about, you know, the, it's going to be a little bit of a historical piece. I'm going to try to get some archive footage or even make my own pretend archive footage or something. Thanks everybody for watching this commentary. It's a little bit of sneak behind the curtain, a peek, a peek sneak behind the curtain. Um, stay tuned for, like I said, all the stuff coming out on this channel and go check out Gabe because he does some awesome stuff. Uh, he's really making moves and as far as it goes with, um, uh, upping production value and creating really cinematic and quality stories and quality videos. Um, thank you all for watching and be different.